these uh, pictures here are the from uh, an exhibition of the malediction of Colin Keel. Colin Keel, over the centuries, wound up with a series of grumbles added to him, basically because he was felt to be short-tempered and very quick. Um, so this particular illustration here is one of his frugal existence. Here he's just eating um, salad leaves, whereas his hosts are inviting him to enjoy a meal of salmon and beer and all the good things. And it was felt that this was one of the things that made him very bad tempered. Another example of his bad temperedness was that he called at a house and asking the owner uh, what time it was. And the man uh, didn't really feel like talking to him, so he said, I don't know. And so Colin Keel asked him, are there no roosters here? He says, yes, we've got lots of roosters. But Colin Keel went away bad tempered, saying no roosters would ever crow in that area again. So this is why the stone roosters are in this particular picture. One of the other things that Colin Kill was reputed to was to be very short tempered about people who didn't tell him the truth. This picture is of a story from Tory Island. Uh, he met a man coming back from fishing with a bag on his, in his hand and he asked him what was in the bag and the fisherman decided he didn't want to tell uh, Colin Keel what he had so he claimed they were um, crabs but because it was a lie Colin Kill got very annoyed and turned him into stone. And around the edge of the picture, I have the various activities of the people of that day and age took place. Another aspect of Colin Kill's having difficulty talking to people was the man who you see at the top of this uh, drawing didn't want to talk to him so he told his wife that to tell Colin Keel that he had had a hard night and he was sleeping so Colin Keel as he left said if he's sleeping that's good but let him sleep for as long as he needs and the man stayed asleep for seven years which of course is the big difficulty of being rude to a saint. This is a drawing of one of the classic uh, poems told about uh, the saints of Ireland. Uh, In down three saints do dwell, Patrick, Bridget and Colin Keel. Colin Keel and St. Boudin were in Scotland um, trying to convert the Picts and unfortunately they ran into a position in which the Picts decided that they were going to get rid of these two people permanently. When they got to the seashore, Curra, uh, to the Curra, Colin Keel managed to get into the curl that St. Boudin was left behind. And rather than go back to him, he shouted across the water to pray. St. Boudin, pursued by pagans, prayed. The stone he was on floated and Boudin was saved. And the story is that he floated across the sea 
to Kolvar in the Inishowen Peninsula, floated up the river, and the, you can see from the bridge the stone that he floated on with his fingers uh, left in the stone. This particular picture is about why uh, you have the flatfish, which is here. Tom Keel was crossing a stream and the salmon in the stream tripped him up. So he then decided that they shouldn't be so active and turned them into, into flatfish so they'd have to live on the bottom of the stream. This picture is also about food. Colin Kill visited a cottage where some bed was, bread was being baked over the uh, griddle and asked for some of the bread. And the lady of the household said, well, I can't give you any right now because it hasn't been, it's only been baked on one side. And because of his short temperedness, he was extremely rude about uh, this and cursed people who only cooked bread on one side. The big problem with um, when one's illustrating stories like this is that the impression that you get of a particular person is covered by centuries of people coming up with stories and just using one person as being the person responsible for it. This particular picture is how to cure a cow and it's rather unfortunate. The idea was that you made the cow stand in a stream and you uh, hit it with a rope until the knots came out of the rope. Um, hardly veterinarian practice for the 21st century. This is a picture of one of the earliest instances of copyright. Colin Peel copied a particular book at a monastery and the abbot of the monastery demanded the copy. Colin Keel, having spent several weeks, if not months, creating the copy, decided that he was not going to let the copy go. And the result of it was a battle between Colin Keel's relatives and the associates of the abbot. Um, it, there was a, an adjudication made by a, an independent person which said, to every cow it's calf and to every book it's copy. Um, Colin Keel's bad temper didn't save him from uh, people who decided that they wanted to uh, slow him up a bit and in this particular picture he was pursued over the bogs and fell into a bog hole and had great difficulty getting out of it so he um, in the little piece that's underneath it he cursed people who did not leave a step in the cutting of turf to enable people to get out of the hole quickly. This is a, a Randall uh, illustration and here are people that were attacking and chasing Colin Keel and to get away he made a mighty leap from the top of a hill at Crocolee and landed on a flagstone and left the imprint of his foot in the stone and got away. As part of the folklore of Colin Keel was that 
he left Ireland after the battle over the book and went to Iona, where he established a monastery. However, because he was such an important person and had all sorts of connections, he was invited to come back as being a judge and an adjudicator at a place on the other side of Boyle from Enishowen, um, more or less in the area where the Broiter Gold Boat was found. And because the folklore had him banishing himself from Ireland, a story was created that when he came back, he had tied sods of Scottish soil to the bottom of his feet and had a blindfold so he would not view Ireland. In Colin Keel's day, of course, movement around the country was mainly by foot. Only the very wealthy could afford to ride. So basically only kings or warriors had horses. Colin Keel was resting at the top of a hill and took his shoes off so as to give his feet some air. Then all of a sudden, some people who did not like him turned up, so he managed to get just a single shoe on. And rushing away, managed to damage his foot. He then cursed anybody that only traveled without having their shoes on properly. One of the many stories that were told of Colin Keel was his great powers that he had. He unfortunately caused the death of a cow that belonged to a widow. And he felt extremely sorry for this, so he decided to fix that particular problem because it was her only possession. So he then took the bones of the cow and assembled them all together and all except one knee joint managed to find everything. He then restored the cow to life and so it then produced milk for the widow. And But the cow missing its knee joint was lame and traditionally it was it was felt that lame cows would always produce very good milk. This particular story uh, was accredited to Colin Keel's day, which was a Thursday. A person who was suffering from insanity was tied to the back of a five-oared boat and then rode through the water as fast as the people could to um, achieve and it was felt that this was going to be a kill or cure method for uh, helping the person that was suffering from insanity.